guys i hated frosh so much i was hanging with you and then i realized i didn't think it was true i was surprised when i found out i'd fallen for you hey what's up you guys it's Renette. welcome to another video today i'm going to be doing things i wish i knew before going off to university and this is a collaboration video with my friend allison who goes to mac for commerce as well and she's going to be chiming in on some of the things she wished she knew number one you can hate frosh but love the school guys i hated frosh so much i don't know why but it was chaotic to me i was exhausted i was meeting so many people a day but i felt like there was nobody i really clicked with and I actually thought, oh God, I picked the wrong school. I got a transfer to University of Toronto, which is jumping to conclusions really, really quickly. So if you don't like Frosh, it's okay. Just wait till school year. I guarantee it's gonna be better. Number two, eat properly, sleep at night and exercise. This is so important. Living by yourself is freeing, but it comes with a lot of responsibility to take care of yourself. In the first semester, the first half before reading week, I was consistently going to bed at 3 a.m. I was not eating three meals a day and I think I hit the gym once. But then after reading week, I had a revelation. And I was like, that's it. You're gonna go to the gym every morning. You're gonna eat three meals a day and you're going to go to bed at 10. And ever since then, I've become happier. I think my academics have become stronger and I've become a more positive person. Number three, you can still get good marks. I don't know why I thought in university it'd be impossible to get 80s or 90s. That's not true. As long as you put in the effort, then you can get good marks. That being said, I put in effort in some of my calculus tests and I did not get 80s or 90s. But as long as you try your best, you can expect in general to be proud of the marks that you get. Number four, get a mentor. So in my first year, I got a first year commerce mentor. He was in second year, obviously I was in first, and I asked him a lot of questions. He gave me advice and resources. Having a mentor was so useful to me. It's like having, you know, when you're playing a video game and there's a map guide and like, he's like, I'm gonna help you across your journey. Well, that's what having a mentor is like, it's awesome. Number five, be outgoing. You'll meet many people. You never know who you're gonna click with. So this kind of ties into Frosh. I was meeting so many people and I was getting discouraged because there was, wasn't anyone where I was like, oh, we click, like I can see us being friends for a long time. But it took me five days to meet Allison and then a couple days after to meet the girls on my floor who I still keep in touch with today. So don't be discouraged if you don't make lifelong friends on the first day, it's fine, it will come. Number six, break things into chunks. This is probably the biggest thing on this list that I want to emphasize because in high school I would study the night before and I'm not trashing on anyone who does that because it worked for me back then I'm sure it works for you now but in university it's not necessarily that the content is harder there's just a lot more content so if you break it up into like two hours a day for three days you will better yourself if I had a microeconomics test on Friday, I would do two hours a day starting Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And using this schedule helps me not only achieve marks I was proud of, but I had a lot of time for Netflix, hanging out with friends. I would actually finish all my work by 4 p.m. So it was like a work day. It was like nine to four grind, and then I had the rest of the day to chill out. Number seven, making friends can be hard at the start. Yeah, this is, definitely true once again i don't know why i thought this maybe it's because of the movies i watched that when your parents drop you off at school it's like boom best friends forever not true like it's a process it takes time everyone's eager to make friends of course but there are people that you naturally get along with better so i think just be patient with that one Number eight, you can be whoever you want. If you like to party, you can party. I don't, but I like to do a lot of fitness classes and there were a ton. There's also intramural sports, there are board game clubs, sign language clubs. Everyone can have a place in school. You just gotta go and find places where you can be yourself. Number nine, keeping up with friends at home requires tremendous effort on both sides. So, I thought that it'd be quite easy to stay in contact with people from high school, but that's not really true. Everyone's on their own path. Everyone's super busy. They're going through the same 
exact things as you just in different schools so it's okay if you lose touch but there's one friend at home who I stayed in contact with almost every day and we hung out on the weekends so as long as two people are willing to put in the effort I think you can still stay in touch but don't be discouraged if some friendships fade away temporarily. Number 10, take electives that you're interested in. In my first year, I got three electives. I took geography, media, and religion. I really liked all of those electives other than geography. It was too technical and science-y for me, but media and religion are things that I've always been sort of interested in. As long as you take an elective that you have genuine interest in, I think you can do really well in it. Number 11, it's okay to feel homesick. And this was so true for me. Obviously, we've been living in our houses with our parents and siblings for years and years and years, and now you're by yourself. Yeah, like homesick did hit me at the beginning, and I would go home almost every weekend, and I know a lot of my friends would go home as well. But then towards the end of the year, I would go weeks without coming home, and that was just because I got busy and I just didn't need to come home as often. So if at the beginning you feel like you have to go home, go home. But if that wears off in the end, then that's sad as well. And the last one for me, number 12, is to have a bomb playlist. Obviously, this is more fun than anything serious, but if you really want to feel like your life is a coming of age movie, make sure you have an awesome playlist when walking across campus. Okay, so one of the first things I wish I knew going into university was how important it is to stay on top of a sleep schedule. I did not do this for a semester and um, especially during exam season, my sleep schedule got really like messed up. I was going to bed at five in the morning. I was waking about one in the afternoon. So I was still getting eight hours of sleep, but I was stressed and I knew that what I was doing was not healthy for my body so stay on top from the beginning so that you don't get into a situation like I did the next piece of advice I have may seem a little stupid but I made the mistake of not bubbling in the right test number for the first test I wrote at university so I thought I had failed it when I actually didn't just because I bubbled in the wrong test number and then the scantron was marking like a different test so make sure you bubble in the right one. Um, and again, I know that may sound stupid, but I know multiple people who did that. <laughs> this piece of advice is really random, but going into university, I would have advised myself, like, don't even bother going to the gym later in the day, go in the morning, because there's like a certain point in the day where it just becomes very hectic. There's like all these sweaty, like jack guys, and they're all super intimidating. And it's just also hard to like find equipment during that time of the day. So go in the morning and get your workout done early in the day. One thing RCI liked to tell us a lot was that there's always going to be another party, but there's never going to be another midterm. So she was basically just implying that like you have only one chance to do well in this midterm, but you have plenty of other opportunities to go out. So just make sure you don't go out the night before you have a midterm. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Allison for being in this video. If you have any suggestions, leave them below and I'll see you guys in the next one.